Hello there and welcome. In this video we are taking another probably very long overdue look at the planted macroalgae lagoon. Now this aquarium has been on my channel for quite a while. It was set up about three years ago and I've done a few updates along the way but it's been probably around a year since my last update. Before we get going, if you like this video, please remember to press the like button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. Also, remember to hit the bell button just to get notifications of my new content. So I can say without doubt or hesitation that this particular aquarium is and has been my most successful aquarium build ever. In the location which it is set, it gets a tremendous amount of attention and lots of positive feedback. In fact, many people have never seen a reef tank set up in this way and it opens a lot of doors and a lot of people's minds to the fact about putting macroalgae within your main display. So it hasn't changed massively since the last time I did an update, other than the fact that everything has grown, everything has flourished and certain things have died out and been outcompeted by other species. So for instance, some of the macroalgae that were in this tank about a year ago, some of them have actually almost disappeared, whereas other ones have taken over that niche and grown really well. The main macroalgae in this tank that looks like the grass, that's all along the substrate, is called Calerpa prolifera. And this is one of my favorite macroalgae for pretty much any aquarium. It can go in your refugium or it can go in your main display and and, um, it's an excellent addition and I really really like it. The other macroalgae that are in this tank are other green ones such as Calerpa lentilifera, there's a little bit of Calerpa brachypus, although this one seems to be being outcompeted by the lentilifera which is not a bad thing because the brachypus is a bit overwhelming sometimes. Also we have blue macroalgae called blue octo. Now this one tends to go in fits and starts, it takes over and grows really well and then it tends to die back and then come back in a couple of weeks or so. And here you can see it's at that stage where it died off and now it's starting to come back. And in front of that we've got one which kind of struggles in this tank but it's been holding on for three years and that's the haleptilin or red fern algae. Also on the substrate is another macroalgae which I've actually had problems growing in quite a lot of systems but in this particular system it's doing really well and that is Soliaria and that's this red stick bamboo like macroalgae. So overall the macroalgae is the real cornerstone uh, and it's what holds this entire system together because it's where all the nutrients go and it's what makes this particular aquarium so vibrant, so healthy and also so stable. The other thing which has grown over the last three years and also is uh, a bemusement to a lot of the people that see this aquarium is the quite large now mangrove tree which is growing out the side of this aquarium. A couple of years ago this mangrove was literally a stick with two leaves on but we can see it has grown, it has branches and it has branches on branches. I have actually had to move the light that was shining on it because initially it was directly above it but I've moved it to the side now and I'm training this mangrove to grow towards that light and actually grow out into a huge tree. It would be a really spectacular sight to walk in and see a regular sized reef aquarium with a really good sized mangrove tree growing out the top of it. Really cool and there's not really much secret to how I've been keeping this mangrove alive. Initially when I uh, planted it I put some root balls underneath of it. These are ones that are traditionally used for lilies um, and also what I've been doing is using a spray. So I've been spraying the leaves every couple of days and that's really important for mangroves to succeed in the aquarium. It washes salts off the leaf and allows the tree to actually carry on growing and respire through its leaves. In terms of the life which includes the fish and corals and things, now the corals haven't really changed. I've had to remove a few corals because they were being overgrown by the algae. So obviously that's a lesson there because algae will grow over most things and they can swamp out some corals. Um, there was a lovely huge clam in here which was growing really well. It was in there for about two years. Unfortunately I put a treatment in there to um, just remove a little bit of cyanobacteria. The cyano was getting a little bit out of control so I added a cyano killer um, which unfortunately said it was reef safe on the label but it killed off the clam. So a bit disappointed in that, but uh, you live and learn, I guess. But other than that, the fish have changed slightly. So I did have a coral spawn in here a while back and the excess nutrients causing the ammonia spike killed off a lot of the original inhabitants, which have been replaced. 
So in here there are lots and lots of fish. They're quite camera shy. So to get them on camera, I you know I've put some food in there and we can watch them. There's damsels, there's chromis, a lovely pyramid butterfly, uh, a few scooter blennies, a few snake pipe fish. We've got this wonderful liar tail hogfish, which I've got to say is one of my favourite fish of all time. There's a dusky wrasse, which when they're younger, they are just brown, horrible looking wrasse, but here you can see when they're adults, they look spectacular. A wonderful wreck fish, which has really brightened up and got its colour as it's become older. Two adult Bangai Cardinals, they are a pair. They do threaten to spawn, and I have seen them holding eggs at one or two points, but they've never really come to anything. And then we have our pair of mixed clownfish. The female is the black one, and the male is the orange one. Now these guys do regularly spawn on this piece of rock here. Typically, as I'm recording this video, they're between spawning, so I'm assuming tomorrow they will start laying eggs because the last one's hatched yesterday, so probably the worst time to record them. And they do spawn uh, every seven to 10 days and it's quite a cool thing to see. So they're obviously really happy. Unfortunately, none of the fry ever get anywhere because as soon as they hatch, I'm assuming they're getting eaten by the rest of the tank inhabitants. But the fish in here, they get fed three or four times a day. They get fed very, very heavily. You can see how happy and fat they are. And that just shows how mature and developed the tank is. The biodiversity in this system is massive. I mean, there's wild clams growing. There's numerous different sponges growing. There's feather dusters which have popped up, there's mushrooms, there's all sorts of life in here. Now as well as being a spectacular tank and something which has been going for a long time now, it's also one of the easiest systems I've ever looked after. It kind of looks after itself. In terms of how I maintain it, well I'm very lazy on the water changes, I probably do about a third every couple of months because it just doesn't require it. I do water changes as and when I see the things in there starting to flounder because I can tell there's something wrong and a water change tends to rebalance it. I also fairly regularly add nutrients for the macroalgae, so I add a full aquarium plant fertilizer which contains nitrates and phosphates and I also dose a liquid iron fertilizer. And I do this every two to three weeks. But other than that, this particular aquarium is on a light timer. It's uh, on full light for about 10 hours. There's a very, very gentle flow. The fish get heavily fed uh, and everything just ticks over really well. And everything's growing perfectly. I would say one of the key elements to this entire system has got to be the deep sand bed. This sand bed was purposely made to be about two to three inches deep for the reason of enhancing the biological activity and making it so that the substrate is part of the filtration and part of the overall health of this system and it seems to do its job and, uh, and work really well. Now although it looks a bit messy at the front here, I have cleaned it on one occasion and when I cleaned it, it almost crashed the system. So since I've done that, I've left it as is. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you stick along to my channel to see more content that I release in the future. Once again, thanks for watching and happy fish keeping.